Coach, hey, thanks for joining me today on this Simple Coach Coach interview. Do appreciate you taking the time, especially, um, although I'm sure you'd prefer doing this inside rather than outside uh, in Chicago land. So um, thanks for thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, so you, just to jump right in, this is what this is technically your fourth year or your fifth going on to your fifth year or fifth going year? on to my fifth, fifth right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, at North Park, maybe maybe you could just talk a little bit about your soccer experience and sort of your journey and how you ended up the head coach at North Park. That'd be a good okay. Start. Yeah, so I, I came over, I'm originally from Sweden, so I came over in 2008 and I played at North Park for uh, four seasons and after that I was hired as the graduate assistant coach and uh, when I was done with my masters, our longtime head coach John Bourne, he transitioned into a uh, uh, full-time teaching position. Mm -hmm. So he needed a full-time person on, on, on staff. Um, so I was hired as the uh, associate head coach, and I did that for, I believe, seven, eight seasons. And then uh, uh, John got promoted to the athletic director here uh, four or five years ago. So so I got the head coaching job after yeah. that. So so we've been working together for, for many years. First yeah. he was my, my head coach, and, and then um, we coached together for seven, eight years. And yeah. Yeah, we still we're, we still work together. We're, I'm just curious. Were you? Did you envision going becoming a coach originally when you graduated, or was it just sort of like these things sort of aligned and you just kept going with it? Yeah, no, I never really planned on it. Uh, my plan was actually to move back to Sweden when I was done with my <laughs> yeah, my, my that like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and. Um, uh, since we don't have college sport in Sweden, coaching yeah. was not maybe something that I wanted to explore. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I met my wife when I was in grad school here, and we decided to to stay. And the timing was just perfect, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so no, I didn't really plan on it, but uh, I was very honored to, you know, be hired first at North Park and now be the head yeah. coach. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me ask you, so so you have experience as a player, and obviously you're over from what you experienced overseas and until now. How would you say American play, have American players gotten better in that time period? Do you notice a difference? Are they more technical, tactical, that, that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's each year is getting better and better. Um, I think when I first came came over and started playing here, um, the, the the game was very very direct. You know, long balls to find a forward, and then everybody pushed up. Where well, um, the last couple of seasons, a lot of teams they're, they're starting to to build from the back and really play good soccer. Uh, so I, yeah, I, I think it's for sure. Every year it's just getting better and better. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, maybe you could talk a little bit about the um, the CCIW. Um, what um, sort of how competitive is it? Um, I know North North Central, obviously, um, really super competitive team. Really great great year this past year, but maybe you could talk about it. Just um, yeah, how how you think you how. How you think it? I'll just say, especially for a team like your, like North Park, how does it prepare you for tournament time? Yeah, I mean, I I think it's a it's a quality conference. I mean, there are no no easy games. I mean, yeah. go back in time, Wheaton won a national championship. Uh, Carthage done they done really well. We've done well a couple of years, and now North Central is up there and. Um, so it's 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 a great conference, um, you know, with North Central having such a good season. Uh, Enzo's done a fantastic job with them. So it's uh, obviously you want to win the conference, but it, I also embrace you know the rivalries and you know when other teams are doing well in the conference. So so I, I think it's it's a very very good conference for sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, can I ask you something? Just because you mentioned, and obviously you from Sweden and got to North Park. Um, I did notice that your roster is has, um, I mean, over half. It seemed like half or over half from 
international. So from from overseas, obviously you have the Swede and Norway connection of Netherlands. Um, saw one from Nigeria, another from the Philippines. Is is that something you're doing? Like, are you intentionally recruiting international players, or is there something about North Park, the 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 university that has this f- channel of that brings play conceivably brings players to 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 your program? I'm not saying it's a good or bad. I'm just I'm just right, right. Curious. No, no, I, I understand. It's a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, when we recruit in Norway and Sweden, it helps mm-hmm. that I'm from Sweden I speak the languages Uh, North Park was actually founded by Swedish immigrants 130 years ago so that's Uh why we didn't name the Vikings we play in blue and gold so (laughs) we have you know long-standing ties to to the Scandinavian countries but I also think you know the location of the school uh, makes a big difference you know there's Mm -hmm. when you're located in a city in the US Mm -hmm. um, pretty much every international player we they want to be in a city yeah. And that's not always the case with uh, typical American players. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of them prefer to be in suburbs or yeah. a little bit in the middle of nowhere. Um, <laughs> so, for, so for me, it's always been easier. Uh, yeah. so, so I think it's many things that, that makes it a good fit for international students. Uh-huh. Uh, we're trying to keep the roster to about 30% internationals. Some yeah. year it might be more, some less. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's, it's a big step for these uh, these students to you know go to a new country, new culture, new everything yeah. is new. So if you have a coach that speak the language who has done this before, you know it, uh-huh. it's it feels a little safer for them to, to take yeah. the step. I would say. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm always interested about who the you know is the founder of the college and all that stuff. So obviously, it's a lot of colleges called Wesleyan because they were founded by. Um, Folks who were fo- pursue, you know, religious folks who were doing the, the following the Wesleyan tradition of Christianity, and and it's little known that there's a there was a migration in the eight nineteen nineteenth century. A lot of Swedish folks came over into different pockets. Chicago, yeah. Michigan is another. Um, Minnesota. Think, Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, and I think some parts of Pennsylvania as well that there were these pockets of com- Swedish communities going around. Yep. So anyhow, I just sort of diverted down my my th- this rabbit hole that is really interesting. Um, I, I will say too, like you're not. I mean, there's some quality ball players that that have come through your program last year. Um, your center. Your center mid and your center forward um, alone were were absolutely outstanding players. Um, Peter, Peter, Peter Olson and, and Gustav Eriksson. Yeah, I think yeah. yeah. Those guys were just absolutely fa- fantastic ball players. But yeah, let me ask you: uh, just when you look back, and I, and we'll dive into it a little bit deeper, but just without any. Somebody asks you, like, how do you think your season went? What, what what's your, what, what's your response as the coach? I think we had a pretty good season. Um, like you said, we lost our two All Americans, the the best two guys I've ever coached here. Yeah. You know, a attacking center mid and a defensive center mid, who uh, fantastic players. So we lost those two. We lost our starting forward, who transferred to Santa Clara, Jesse Anamo. We lost a very good defender in Chris Riesnes, who transferred to Florida Southern, mm-hmm. and also two uh, two wingers who started for us. So it's always tough to replace all those guys. So even though we, we didn't win the conference, you know, a uh, 15-3-3 three and three record is something I'm really happy about. And the goal every year is to to uh, qualify for the NCAA tournament, and we did that. So so I'm I'm happy about the season. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize you, you was that expected the the transfers did you was there I mean those are some if they're going to play those are some not too bad places to play right no or, no or, we had open communication and and mm-hmm. I always recruit players that way saying that if you come here and we will not keep you here you know if if you do well and everything and 
offers open up, we're more than happy to help guys. If it's a better situation um, mm -hmm. somewhere else. So, yeah. so I think that's one of the reasons we get quality players because we can also send good players yeah. to, to other schools. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so I'm happy for those guys. Obviously, you want to keep all the best players, but in the end, you want to do what's best for, for the individuals. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any highlights come to mind from, from, your, from your season? <sighs> we had a couple of good wins, actually, that uh, in the beginning we, we, we played St. Olaf, who I had great respect for yeah. as a team. And we won four to two at home. It's a big win for us. We beat Ohio Northern on the road, uh, so those were obviously two two really good wins for us. So mm -hmm. I think those were our um, the best two moments we had. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that you cross paths with Ohio Northern in the NCAA's, right? Like. Yeah. Um, we never we never been there before, and they had to travel two times up to yeah, Ohio. So, yeah. yeah. Talk about middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, a little bit different. <laughs> a little bit yeah. different. Beautiful yeah. school, great school. Well, absolutely. Like, Ada, Ohio is a quaint little place, but then you go two miles in any direction and you're you're swimming in corn. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's the beauty of it, right? There's yeah, no, yeah. no school that's perfect for, for everybody. No, they, uh, yeah, they, yeah. They might say the same thing when they come to North. Oh, Chicago. And, yeah. you know, so it's, yeah. I like that. I, um, I always say, like, I think in Division Three more so than you see at these really big schools, right? Like, there is such a greater variety in schools um, of, of this type, right? Of Division Three schools, right? Like, you are very, very different from North Central, even though you're just right, probably right, right there with each other, right? Yeah. And then. And then obviously you go out to some place like Ohio Northern, right? Like it's totally different, totally different vibe. Um, I think that's what my int why my interest is in. Yeah, in no, I, I schools, agree. But, um, what surprised you about this team in particular? I'm making you think, huh? Yeah, you do. It's a good question. <laughs> I wasn't too surprised. I know we had quality. The, the question I had going into the season, can we replace all these guys? I know, you know, sometimes it takes a year or two, especially since we have a lot of internationals, to adjust to, you know, a new style of soccer, new coaching, new refereeing, everything. So that was my big question going into it. But we, we had the best start of in the history of the program. We were 8-0-0 until we, we played uh, Chicago. Um so, so good start. I think we were a little bit unlucky in the end. We, we had four to five guys out pretty much every game after that. Yeah. Uh, we were pretty deep, so, so it's, but it still hurt us a little bit, I would say. But that's the same for everybody. I'm not yeah. making excuses, but um, I'm not too surprised, to be honest. I, I think we had the capacity of maybe winning one more game or two. Not sure if we had the quality to win the national championship, but you know everything can happen. But uh, so overall, you know, fifteen three and three, I'm I'm happy about the that that record. Yeah. Were you? Were was it? Um, do you think you were in a better? Do you think last year's team was better than this year's team? The 2021 better than the 2022, knowing all the guys that you, you had uh, on that squad? And do you think, do you think, like, if you could have, you, you, like, that was a year that you could have gone the distance? Does that make sense? To yeah, no, no I, I think we're a little bit better. Uh, obviously, like I said, we, we lost some quality, quality players. So, so individually, a little bit better. Um, also, I'm happy about that season as well. You know, yeah. we, we you get it run into teams like like Chicago, and it's always a, a tough game. You know, they yeah. have nothing but respect for that program, and yeah. that they, they just been very very good. Very and good, yeah. um, we played them in the Elite Eight, and yeah. they score first. And I know it's going to be very tough for us. They're yeah. so solid defensively. Yeah. So, yes, uh, we I think we were a little bit better. Um, but you know we've been 
good since 17. You know, all those guys that you mentioned before, they came in as freshmen in, yeah. in 2017, and we made it to the national final. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we started six freshmen in the national championship. So it's, uh, yeah, 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 been fortunate to, to keep yeah. those guys for. No, a while. That's, I'm not saying like. <clears throat> I mean, it's degrees, right? Where you're, the level you're playing at, I think consistently, it's like when you say last year was better than this year or vice versa or whatever, you're, it's very narrow, very yeah. narrow definition, right? Like, are you better? Yeah, in some respects, probably. You might have had the experience and the, the guys who, you know, just carry the team a little bit differently. And now this year, you're still really good, but you don't have that experience you don't have that i don't know that leadership just because they're young kids right they're stepping yeah. into a role they don't have that experience so yeah um hey you, all right so so with the season this is some rural questions with the season under your belt do you, do you have any thoughts on the overtime changes you, you only really had three ties two north central and carthage during the regular season and then the, your last game in the NCAA tournament against Ohio Northern, do you do you like not having overtimes during the regular season? Would you prefer that there be OTs? Yes and no. The problem we're running into is the you know you play two games per week. Yeah. If you go to overtime two times a week, that's 120 minutes. Per, it, it's a lot for for their bodies. Um, if we played once a week, I would definitely be for overtime. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if you play like a defensive style of soccer, you can sit back and you can defend for 90 minutes. 120 minutes, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, so I like it. It's always fun to, if you win in overtime. Um, yeah. But again, these guys are so beat up when when the uh, in the end of the season in the conference playoffs and the NCAA tournament, their their bodies are are, are sore yeah. constantly. So it's such a balance. So yeah, I, I think it's a good thing that they removed overtime during the regular yeah, yeah, season. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, would you prefer that they expand the season out, like so, get more 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 preseason time, or or you know, just sort of stretching the season out to give you some more rest days? Because I think that's the big thing. Maybe. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, no, I, I would prefer that. Obviously, you grow up in Europe, you, your preseason is like three months, three months. and then yeah, you play yeah. for your entire season is 11 months. So, yeah, yeah. I, I would be for that, uh, yeah. obviously. But that's a lot of things, logistics and, and financial uh, questions. No, sure. Yeah, so. yeah. That's, that's the rub, right? It, it costs money to do yeah. that. And, and schools afford it, right? I think that's the big. Um, all right, so let, let me let me shift over to the to the season real quick. So so you go fifteen three and three. You came in second in the CCIW behind North Central, um, and then you. I mean, North Central was really good this year. I mean, they were pretty impressive. Did you were you confident about making the NCAA's with your with your record and sort of where you were at with strength of schedule? You're never confident, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I, that came back and bite me in the past. I know. I remember <laughs> <Yeah>. in uh, <laughs> it was an 18. We were 16 and three, yeah. and we thought for sure we we're gonna get a bid, but we didn't. So, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> if you don't win, you sit there and you you're trying to figure out like who's yeah. in, who's not. Yeah. But I know we had a couple of good wins. Like I mentioned, we, we yeah. Saint Olaf win and the Northern Ohio Northern win was was huge for us. Yeah. I was a little bit surprised that our strength of schedule was not higher. Uh, I thought this was going to be the highest uh, strength of schedule we ever had. We have Chicago and those teams, yeah, Washington, yeah. and our conference doing well as, as well. So I was a little bit surprised when the numbers were lower than what I expected. Mm -hmm. And that made me a little bit, uh, not scared, but, but yeah. hesitant. Makes you think, um, gives you enough to be like a lo enough doubt, right? Like it does. Yeah, for sure. Enough doubt. For sure. Hey, can, so, I, can I ask you about, uh, I, I sort of, going in totally different directions here but can i ask you about like what do you think i mean you lost to chicago at chicago three nothing um do you like were, were they that good 
Do you think they were that good? They're cool. I, I think, yeah. I mean, I thought they were, they were different level. Like I yeah. thought them and Messiah were just at a totally different level than other teams. So I, I'm just I curious agree. when you played them. I, I know, I knew the key was going to be to score the first goal. Yeah. Um, Cause like I said before, they're so good defensively. So I, I think we scored the first goal. It's a different game. And I, I think the first half is very, very, very even. Uh, we had a couple of chances as well. Um, and then we had a, we were a little unfortunate where, you know, our goalkeeper and center back kind of collided and they scored the first, first goal. Yeah. And then, you know, in the end, you got to push up. We went down the three back line. So even though they might have been a little bit better than us, I don't think maybe. 3-0 reflected a game. Yeah, it was yeah. a very even game, yeah. and uh, but um, I, I know as soon as we concede the first goal, it's going to be tough for us. Tough. You know, They're, yeah. They reminded me of watching them a lot of. They were just really methodical and picked. Yeah. yeah. And and if they did get that goal, go ahead goal, getting breaking them down at that point because they were really intelligent about it, right? Oh, like, for sure. They knew to defend to defend first and. Yeah, um, and that's why the students there, right? It's, yeah, uh, yeah. Intelligent players. That no, that's what yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they were, they and were also, fun. you know, they they kept the same core, like the center backs, the two best center backs I've ever yeah. seen in Division Three. They yeah. kept them for four years. You know, so yeah. they're just getting better and better for each year. Yeah, so, yeah. I I'm happy. Uh, they've been so close so many times. Um, so I'm happy for Chicago. Yeah. Um, but also, it's fun for our region as well. You know, we we had a at least one team in the final four every year the, yeah, the last yeah. couple of years in Calvin us and Chicago and now North Central is doing well so it's a tough region it's very good yeah. soccer here hey let me let me ask you that that actually like who do you competitively for players the non-internationals right I'm, I'm although I'm sure there's probably some competitive pressures there but uh, the for the for the who do you recruit do you recruit like the same pool of players as like a uh, granted, the academics are going to differ, but like a Chicago and a North Central, are you sort of going at each other for these for the same guys or not? Not Chicago. Uh, no. They're usually done way before yeah. us. Um, so, so, but uh, North Central, yes, I uh, know mm -hmm. that they've done tons of scouting and yeah. it's it's a lot of talent in Chicago too. So yeah, you're going to yeah, run yeah. into the same schools. It's been Dominicans, it's been Elmhurst, the Carthage, North Central. Yeah. So, so you're up against a lot of the same schools. Um, our, how we have been successful is we have been able to get a couple of guys who have been able to commute to North Park. Not that many, but a few that might have been D1, D2 caliber players, but they want to stay at home and, and commute so we can get those. Um, some oh, of the that's second interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so th you got to figure out like how you're going to be successful, right? And for mm -hmm. us, it's been... Chicago kids and internationals. That, that's the two things. Uh, yeah. Haven't been lucky with maybe some wealthier suburbs and stuff like mm -hmm. that, but second generation players have, that live close by. There's a lot of talented ones here. So, yeah. so those, those are the two things that make, have, you know, we've, that's why we've been successful. I, I, I think, like, forgetting the coasts, I think Chicago is the best sort of talent area um in between the coasts right like just so so many good players and i think a lot of them if, you know the chicago fire or whatever they're called now they they have all of that infrastructure now and 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 then obviously um the ethnic communities that surround the, the you know the poles and the uh, have some just some great great quality ball players that yep. come out of there and i, I yep. just think it's a huge talent pool right and if you're local mm -hmm. to that scene you yeah. know just because well, you so don't win the one guy you win the other guy who's just as good right like I think yeah yeah and, and it's it's a lot of competition too there's yeah. a lot of universities yeah. around yeah. here so um yeah. so yeah but it's a lot of talent for sure yeah for sure. yeah yeah um you know but let me ask you about going back to the ties. Do you do you think team? Again, I'm I'm asking more of the higher caliber caliber programs or who have just traditionally been power, powerhouses. Do you think there were teams that you played against who 
may have played for the tie, like may have approached the game and be like, look, our, I think realistically our best opportunity is to get walk out of here with a draw, and so we're going to play you that way. Do you think that happened? I can only guess, but probably. Yeah. Probably if we play a team, then yeah, I, I can yeah. see that. Yeah. See that. Yeah. It's obviously hard for me to answer that question. No, yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure, yeah, sure. That's my guess, at least, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I've had a um, couple, couple coaches come on and say, like, you know, there were teams from the minute one that their goalkeeper would take, you know, would seemingly be like two minutes to get a goal kick off or, uh, you know, taking their times on throw-ins and that sort of thing, just trying to bleed the clock out as as, yeah. as much as they could. So I, I was more curious about that. Yeah, yeah it changes a little thing, you know, because when you knew that you had that extra overtime, you know, you you're not not feeling as stressed. But there was a couple of games where we, uh, our opening game, where we didn't score for the first 70 minutes, even though mm -hmm. I thought we were the better team, and yeah. you would not have been stressed. The previous year, but this, that's how like, yeah. yeah, <laughs> time is running be, out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so you, you, you've had tremendous success. Like, based on sort of where you're sitting right now, like, if you were to take a stab, how do you think your 2023 squad looks in comparison to those previous? Year? And I, I'm sorry to compare, but no, 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 no that's yeah. fine. Uh, so we're losing a couple of really good guys. Um, we have we're losing two guys for sure who are seniors. We an all American right back that we had, mm -hmm. and uh, all region center mid center back yeah. that we had, and then we have three guys who could possibly come back for the Masters. Uh, they're also three starters, three of our best guys. Yeah. So it all depends on that. Mm -hmm. We have. Uh, Somehow this year we're out way earlier with all the commitments and all that. Uh, mm -hmm. so we have a big class coming in, and it's a couple of guys who I'm really excited about. So mm -hmm. until you get them on campus, um, you never know. But I, mm -hmm. I go to Norway and Sweden every year so I can watch some of these um, guys live. Mm -hmm. And the guys that we're bringing in right now I'm, I'm excited about. But, mm -hmm. you know, it is an adjustment period, so you never yeah, know. Yeah. And, and but. We should be competitive for sure. Yeah, I, yeah, I think. yeah. And uh, That's, uh, whether, yeah, go ahead. Whether we're like contenders for the national yeah. championship or we contenders to win the conference, that that's yeah. we'll see. But but well, I'm happy the, about where we are. That's the that's the year thing, right? Like, there's you know, like you, it's hard to judge like who's going to show up on that first yeah. day and and what do they look like and. You know, how much are their, their 17, 18 year old kids, how much is their, of their brain is going to be messing yeah. with their soccer, you know, like it's just the way it is. So. And that's if, if we go back to 17, you know, we were, we knew that we were going to be good, but we didn't know how good we would be. And all these six freshmen who started, they, they mm -hmm. took us all the way to the national finals. You, yeah. you never know. Um, yeah. uh, but, but again, I, I, I feel pretty good about the team. I, yeah. yeah. Not a bad spot to be in, like I said. I'd no, the no. <laughs> you know, like a, <laughs> like a lot of teams would be like, yeah, I, I would take his roster right now. Um, <laughs> hey, two guys I was really impressed with. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's pronounced Isaac, I, Isaac Flo, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Angel Barriga. Yeah. Like, how, how important are guys like that to your team and sort of what you what you do? Yeah, well, those two, they were different makers. Um, yeah. Angel Barriga is one of the best outside backs I've ever seen in D3 college. I think it's just phenomenal. You know, really? one on one. He, yeah. Really? I, wow. he, he'll beat the, break the lines every time. And uh, man on oh man, like one on one, he, they can't beat him. He's, yeah. His quality. Isaac, obviously, fantastic as well. He. Um, he he was a little bit unlucky when he came in last year because he had a concussion and he had some injuries and stuff like that. And we we had Jesse and Amo who I mentioned before who now plays for Santa Clara mm -hmm. as our starting forward. Then so, but he just got better and better in the end. We couldn't keep him out. Uh, yeah. But then he came in, you know, second year again the adjustment yeah. period that I talked about, and um, it's one of our best players for sure. Yeah. Um, and Isaac is one of those guys who. 
he has two more years of eligibility, yeah, so he yeah. could possibly come back. Yeah. No, that's I, I, I was one, like I was surprised he was a so- sophomore. Like, yeah, I, I, yep. I was surprised. Right, you don't see. It's rare that I think you see guys in their freshman sophomore that really are elevated above. And I'm not saying your guys are not quality, but right, they're that they're that guy that you point to and like, who's that? Who's that mm-hmm. player? Right? Like, yeah. Just he's one of those. Like, and for a sophomore, wow. That's yep. pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, hey, just a couple more questions, and I'll let you get on with your with your day. By the way, I do like that trophy over your shoulder. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you would prefer to see national champ, but hey, you know what? I'm sure everyone would be like, I'd love to have one of those bad boys. Maybe, maybe uh, one day. Maybe one day. One day, one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't doubt it. I honestly, I'm telling you, I I have certain teams in my mind that I think. No surprise, no surprise. You guys are one of them, right? Like, I appreciate I think, that. I think your no. quality is, I think Thank your you. quality is so is so, so so is there, right? It's just the pieces and does everything align, you know? Yeah. I think, I think even for Chicago, right? Like it wasn't a foregone conclusion for them, right? Like I think they needed everything to be right, injuries, mm-hmm. all that kind, and and to get to that point. I think that's the way it is every year, but. What 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 do you do in the spring, like for for spring for spring sessions? Do, are you is it technical? Is it tactical? Do you play? Do you do you, do you have a, a a bigger purpose in mind than just sort of having the sixteen days and soon or whatever it is to? So obviously now we can't coach the teams, so but uh-huh. we're fortunate enough to have an indoor turf. Mm-hmm. So we have a little in, inner squad indoor league that the mm-hmm. captains are running. So we play inside. Um, three days a week and then they're in the the weight room two days a week so we go five days a week right now I think you know the indoor turf they it's a little bit different than playing on hardwood you know you get the right touches and yeah. for me that's more important to get the touches in rather than bulking up being bigger and stronger yeah because we're not the biggest or fastest team but but no. a lot of times we, we're technical yeah so then we go outside after spring break sometime and <sighs> We don't work on any tactics. You know, every year you bring in new yeah. guys and then you have to start all over. I just want to keep them as fit as possible and get as many touches on the ball. But yeah. we do a lot of small-sided. Uh, yeah. That's We always done that. I think you get all the elements that you need yeah. in, in soccer when you do small-sided. Uh, the press, the, uh, yeah. the the limited time on the ball, the the, the physicality of it, the, the quickness, the quick decisions you need to make and how to play out of tight tight spot mm-hmm. so that's what we do we do it all the time even yeah. during the season a small side yeah. yeah um let me ask you do, do you do you like rondos do you do i do love you, rondos yeah yeah well can you can you just sort of talk about why you love rondos this is my latest thing that i started in a conversation about with jay martin at ohio wesley and that mm-hmm Every team does rondos. None of them do it well, right? Like it's just one of those. So one of my crazy theories. So it's uh, so we start every practice with rondos, mm-hmm. twenty minutes. That's our warm up. We do it all the time. I'm not gonna lie. There are some times where I think they they're not serious enough about it. It's <laughs> we're like goofing around or whatever. You gotta sh- shut it down and it's, okay, let's do it real because it's it's a fun drill. Mm-hmm. But um, Again, I'm all for like touches on the ball, touches on the ball. We want to get as much as possible. Mm-hmm. But you also, the, the thing I like about Ron is the movement of the ball, you know, to create triangles within the grid. You know, it's like yeah. the ball's here, you move here, you move here. So yeah. always trying to have the guy have three options, you know, if, if possible. Mm-hmm. So the movement, even though you're on the line and you're kind of stagnant, it uh, translates into a real game. And yeah. we, we've done rondos here many, many years, and that's a big part of what yeah, we do in practice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Um, all right. Last question for you. Probably not, but because I usually think of more as we go. That's but, okay. But, um, and you talked a little bit about it. Your recruiting class for 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 twenty twenty three. Like, I'm assuming you have some because you mentioned Sweden and Norway. I, I'm assuming you have some internationals coming in, and and sort of what do your local players look like? I mean, are you? Yeah, uh, we have two all-state players from Illinois and two all-sectional players already committed, which is uh, 
10 years ago, I don't think we could have gotten those guys, yeah. but it, it become a little bit better every year. And, and I think as soon as the, I would say the D1 offers are out there in Chicago, guys who want to stay local, mm -hmm. they're, they're contacting us right now. And that, that wasn't the case when I started coaching here. Um, and so, so I don't think we ever had two All-State players commit in the same cycle and two All-Sectional guys. So, so I'm happy about it. Um, maybe the difference sometimes is that the internationals are a little bit more game ready the first year, uh, while all some of these uh, good local guys might need a year. Not always. Uh, but we had a good example of um, a forward from from Crystal Lake around here who came in and he didn't play too much in the beginning, but then the further we went into the season, the more he played, and in the end he was a starting forward, and he played really, really well. So, you know, I don't care if you're from from the Nordic countries, the Middle East, Africa, yeah. or down the street. You know, I just want to play the best <laughs> guys. So, so uh, but I know we have a competitive environment, so regardless of where the guys are, they will develop a lot, because we do a lot of technical work. A lot of our guys are, are good on the ball, so... so um, so it's a fun environment, and, and yeah. I think a lot of the guys develop into very good players after playing here. It, all right, so two things just from what you said. The, the, it sounds like, to me, the two things you, you appreciate is that you, you, you really want a competitive environment for all of your players. And then the yep. second, you're not afraid to play guys who – you're not afraid to play freshmen. You're not afraid to these newcomers. If they've demonstrated the first, they're hyper, they're super competitive, and they're obviously good on the ball. You'll yep. you'll you'll put them in. You don't. Hundred percent. That yeah. I mean, that's the beauty with D three, right? You don't have any full scholarships out here. Yeah, I didn't yeah. invest in this person, that per person. So, the best guys are playing. That that's yeah. the way it is. And uh, I realize we're a little bit different since we're a D three school with internationals, yeah. but we have four or five freshmen to start for us every year. That, that's. Yeah, yeah. That's how it is, and yeah. that's how I like it. You know, you come in, you're hungry, you show, and you'll play. You'll play, yeah. Hey, let me, that just, again, told you it wasn't the last Yeah, time. no, go ahead. I have time. <laughs> <laughs> um, Coach, how many, in a, in a regular season, I'm not counting the tournament, right? Like, I, I get that. It sounds like you got a deep bench. Like, what's, on average, how many guys do you play in a game? In a regular, well, just because it's easier to say the regular season, right? Just because the tournament is a different story. But regular season, how many guys do you do you get on the? On the, on the Such a tough question because every year there, there's going to be injuries. We, uh -huh. we played more players in the beginning when everybody was healthy. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to be a team that just sub everybody off and get everybody yeah. on. There has to be some con consistency. Yeah. But four, five, six subs. Yeah. Per, we've done that for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I think next year we we. I think we're gonna be the deepest we've ever been. So we might have to change a little bit. Where we might be able to play with maybe more intensity and play more guys. Um, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But That's um, I'm just curious about that because it, I, the other thing I said and the and why Chicago and why why they make it. Right, they they won it, and these teams get very far is because I think their bench is very is deep, right? Yeah. So that they get to deal with the injuries, right? Because it's like, okay, well, if our main guy can't go, I can bring somebody on who he might not be exactly there, but he's going to fill that role well, right? Yeah. And, um, and 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 they deal with the injuries, and then I just think it's. It helps from a culture standpoint. It gets people like a lot more committed into the game and keeps more guys in check. And like, hey, you're getting time. Why you can't goof off, right? Like we're right. serious about this. So yeah, that's, that's, it's uh, it's a balance, you know, keeping yeah. everybody happy and yeah. guys who might not play, you might need them down down the road in the playoffs and all that. So it's a balance, you know. And sometimes you make the right decisions and sometimes you don't. But um, I have quality assistant coaches, which is great. You know, we're four of us, and we have similar mindset, and we discuss a lot. You know, everything yeah. we talk about uh, together. So, so it's um, you know, hope, hopefully, at least next year we'll be a little bit deeper. I would like that. To
be the yeah, case. Yeah, yeah. Do you uh, do you have is, do you do you have a graduate assistant? I have one full time uh, assistant, and I have two graduate oh, assistants. Wow. But we also oh, yeah, care. Yeah. We also carry a reserve team, so we have two, uh -huh. two full teams. That's why our, our roster is big. So we, we have 50, 60 guys in total um, mm -hmm. on the two teams. So that's wow. Bit, but, mm, I know. Well, that's actually good, right? You'd hate to have 50 to 60 guys and no reserve team, and they're not going to get in. Oh no, 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 right? No. Yeah, yeah, it would be impossible, right? You'd yep. have a revolt two Absolutely. days in. <laughs> yeah. So. And sometimes these guys, are talented players that might need a year or two yeah, yeah. to develop so that we could yeah. do on the reserve team so and d3 is at least in this area trending that way a little bit where more and more <laughs> colleges are adding reserve teams as yeah. well yeah. well you guys have that where you're located i mean you have access to so many schools that makes it possible right to have a reserve mm -hmm. team so you don't have to send the one thing is if you had the reserve team and you have to send them four hours to play games like or five hours like that that might be a little bit much but there's right. enough talent around you to to, to make yeah. that happen right like enough schools to, to play um yeah uh, do you do you train them all together at once no we have no. we've tried it but it's it's too many um too many, so yeah. my assistant coach He's the head coach for the reserve team. Uh -huh. He, he worked with the first team as well. But uh, every year we're getting more and more interest. Um, mm -hmm. So when you have up to like 50 guys, it's, it's impossible it's to have a yeah. productive practice. Yeah. yeah. No, and then too many guys sit. It's not so much the drills. It's like too many guys sit. At some yeah. point, too many guys will be sitting. And that's, you, don't, you don't want that. That's when, they, that's when they start to think, and that's not a good thing. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hey, look, this was great. I really do appreciate you taking the time. I'm a fan. I've, I've said it last year when I was watching you guys. I thought you, I think you play, you play a, a style in a, in a way that is just really fun to watch, really impressive. I love the technical ability that your players bring to the game. And, and I know it's snobbish of me, but it's like that's the way I like to see it, right? I, I'm, I'm like soccer players, I think, in my work, in my mind, soccer players aren't made to want to just, you know, run and launch a ball into nowhere. They're they're looking for purpose, and I think you guys you, you guys play that way with a purpose, and I I, I enjoy that a lot. So I appreciate um, the kind words. Thank you. Yeah. So so thank you. I'm gonna have to get myself a hat. Really do, um, you know, uh, show it off. So um, yeah, send me your your address. So I can send it to you. Oh, that would be, yeah, thank you. Um, all right, Coach, thank you very much. Um, I do wish you the best. Maybe in the summer we can connect just before the fall season, do a quick, you know, 15-minute interview and just to see how things are going and do a check-in. And uh, um, Yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. All right. If you like this show, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. You can also find me on anti-social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks. This is a message from my chief marketing officer. I think this keeps him happy.